Season of Discovery is here for World of Warcraft Classic, and I'm going to be teaching you everything you could possibly want to know to become a priest healer, including runes and what ones to get, the new gear, stat priorities and talent trees, etc, etc. Now, first of all, let's look at what race you should pick. If you are Alliance, you can be Dwarf, Human, Knight, Elf, and just those three. <laughs> and it really does matter which one you pick. You do actually get extra spells as a priest, depending what race you play. If you are a Dwarf, you're going to get Desperate Prayer, which is an emergency heal for yourself, and Fear Ward at level 20, which is going to ward the friendly target against Fear. For a human, you are going to get Desperate Prayer again and a spell called Feedback. Feedback makes the priest surrounded by anti-magic energy. Any successful spell cast against the priest will actually burn 18 of the attacker's mana, causing one shadow damage for each point of mana burned, and that will last 15 seconds. If you are a Night Elf, you get uh, Star Shards, uh, Rain's Star Shards, down on the enemy's target head, causing damage over 6 seconds, and a Loon's Grace at level 20. So this is at level 10 and 20, by the way. And then level 20, a Loon's Grace reduces the range damage taken and increases your chance to dodge. And now going on to the Horde ones, which is going to be Troll and Undead. Troll has Hex of Weakness, which is going to weaken them, reducing damage caused and reducing the effect of any healing. And level 20, they're going to get Shadow Guard, which is uh, you're basically surrounded by shadows. When a spell melee or range attack hits you, the attacker will be struck instead. Last but not least is Undead. At level 10, they get Touch of Weakness. The next melee attack against the caster will do some damage and reduce damage caused by the attacker and level 20 Devouring Plague. And that is going to afflict them with a disease causing damage over 24 seconds. And damage caused by the Devouring Plague heals the caster. So these are the extra spells that priests actually get dependent on their race. And Blizzard have actually said that down the line, so after phase one and going into phase two and, and beyond, they are actually potentially, they haven't confirmed it, going to let priests access spells from other races as well. Will that come in runes or something else? We just don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. But very interesting news indeed. Looking at our stat priority then, at number one is, of course, raw healing power. The second is going to be MP5. This is actually known as mana per five seconds. And this is going to work while you're casting, etc. And this is going to be your mana regen. This is number two on our priority. The third is spirit. This is also going to affect your mana regeneration. Then we have intellect and spell crit. Some other stats that you should be aware of that are actually not on our top priority, but are really useful is resistance reducing damage taken, stamina, increasing your health, and agility, increasing your dodge chance. Regarding the talent build, this one here is what I would recommend. You can also go down the holy route. However, in my personal testing and theory crafting, I do think that discipline is the way to go for phase one of Season of Discovery. So on the top row on Discipline, we're going to put 5 into 1 Specialization, increasing our damage with 1s. Second row, we're going to improve Power Word Fortitude, which is going to increase the power of it by 30%. Improve Power Word Shield, increasing the, amount, the damage absorbed by 15% with all 3 points. Then on the last row, we're going to be using for Discipline, because remember, we've only got a very select amount of talent points available at level 25. Inner Focus, 1 point in there. When you activate this spell, it's going to reduce the mana cost of your next spell completely, and it's going to increase the critical uh, effect chance by 25% if the spell you're using is capable of critting. And last but not least is Meditation, which is going to allow 15% of your mana to regen while casting, which is really, really useful, because if you already play Classic, you will know mana is crazy. It is the ultimate luxury. We're then going to put two of our final points into Healing Focus in Holy, and this is going to give us a 70% chance to avoid interruption caused by damage when we're casting any healing spell, which, again, if you played Classic, you know about those interrupts. It is really, really painful, especially with healing. Now, looking at the gear, first things first, there are a few that are going to be Alliance or Horde um, gated behind, which, you know can make things a little bit more interesting, but generally, you know, there's a few staffs from the Dead Mines that Alliance can get. 
And there are some, you know, from Horde dungeons that Horde can get. I would say, though, one of the best places to go it seems to be for us cloth wearers is Shadowfang Keep, as you can see above. There is the Feline Mantle, Robes of Aragal, and Belt of Aragal, all coming from two different bosses within Shadowfang Keep. There is the Black Velvet Robes, Mind Thrust Bracers, and Magician's Mantle as well. Just going to want to give you an FYI, these are all BOE, as are the Spider Silk Boots, which are made from tailoring in the top right corner of this slide. And basically, you can find these on the auction house. I would say that maybe engineering is a really good profession to take up because of all the different things we can make, including gear. But tailoring is another really, really solid one. There is even some epic boots that you can wear at level 25 that are also made from tailoring. We then have the Twisted Chanter's Staff. This is also BOE. And then I want to cast your eyes to the Law Keeper's Ring. This is from the Warsong Gulch Reputation. And there is also the Advisor's Ring on the Horde side. This is going to need to get some rep, as I said, with Warsong Gulch, however. Another thing that's not on here would be the Gurubashi um, Arena Trinket, which of course is very difficult to get unless you are a pro at PvP. But this is, if you can get it, going to be phenomenal for you. Now, of course, let's look at the runes that we're actually going to put onto our gear. Now, I will say some of these still have not been found, so I can't actually tell you where they are. But going through the list, we've got Serpendipity, which hasn't been found yet. Flash Heal reduces the cast time of your next Lesser Heal, Heal or Greater Heal, or Prayer of Healing by 20% for 20 seconds, stacking up to three times. This is an absolute must. It is massive. Second is Circle of Healing. This is quite literally an AoE spell ability that you're going to gain from this rune and is very, very good for dungeon and raid content. This one can be found depending on what race you are. Humans can find it located to the east of a hill in southern Elowin Forest. I will put the details below for that one with the coordinates. For a dwarf, it's at the Grizzled Den, wherever the hell that is. Again, coordinates below. Trolls will find it in an area south of the Valley of Trials. And Night Elves, it will be near the Oracle Glade. And as I said, I will be putting, um, what are they called? Coordinates down below for those. And then, of course, we have got Prayer of Healing. This is basically, you can put this heal on someone. When they then get next hit by something, it will then heal them and then jump to another party member. And I must say, sorry, I've just realised, Circle of Healing, haven't found where they are. The coordinates I just mentioned are actually for Prayer of Healing, not Circle of Healing. So the one we're talking about now, the one on the right, that's where the coordinates are below. Circle of Healing and Serpendipity have not been found yet. Sorry for that error there. Um, but yes, the Prayer of Healing, it bounces around your party, and when they get hit, it will then automatically heal them. You can also use the Penance Rune, However, when I've looked at it overall, really, I would just say that these three are the three to go to. And there is also a power word barrier rune as well. But again, I just don't think it's worth it when the throughput of these three is so good. As expected, then the priority in, you know, it's still classic season of discovery. It's going to be quite simple for the rotation. You're going to want to put power word shield on somebody when they're at risk of dying. You're going to want to use Circle of Healing when multiple people in your group are damaged. And this is a really, really strong AoE heal once we can find out where the rune is. And then we've got Prayer of Mending, which we can try and keep this, especially on the tank on cooldown. But remember, it is going to bounce around. It can only be on one person at a time in Classic, however. We can keep up our Renew on the tank. Probably don't want to spam this, however. This is your Healing Over Time Renew. Um, because it is going to get very mana intensive if we're just spamming it on everyone. So I would say try and keep this on the tank. Then we've got heal or flash heal. And again, depending on the mana cost here, you know, use heal or flash heal dependent on how much healing needs to be done and how quickly it needs to be done. If you've got nothing else to do and you want to do some DPS, you can just shoot that wand. Don't forget we have actually got some talent points in there to make that a bit more dangerous for whoever we are targeting. Um, but that is pretty much it. And also don't forget, you've got your inner focus as well from your talents that we can use to expend, uh, extend um, our time spent outside of the five second mana rule. 
And that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. Don't forget to check out my other guides. I am doing all of them for Season of Discovery, and I'm also doing retail as well. So please do subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you want to hang out, if you want to play with other players, etc., then join the Discord because we have a really thriving WoW community there as well that is super friendly.